Good evening and welcome to our evening prayer for this Tuesday, the 10th of November. Today is observed as the uh, day of uh, Leo the Great, Bishop of Rome, who passed away in 641. It's also a day in which we, the United Nations, has set as World Science Day for Peace and Development. It's also Area Code Day. Uh, it's, uh, we have to keep adding new codes. The area code system was to make it possible to dial directly to all regions in North America, the Caribbean islands, and then to the whole world. With each geographic area, country, and uh, province or state assigned its own code. And maybe some of you have had the experience of dialing friends or family uh, in, in other countries, the other side of the world, uh, sometimes having to remember that if it's 7 o'clock at night for you, it's 7 o'clock in the morning for them. That's often the case in calling China. So this is a day that we do observe that and just consider how remarkable it is that we can be in touch with one another. With the magic now of Internet and whatever, just the other day on my phone uh, using uh, the Messenger app, I was able to have a video phone conversation with a friend in Jamaica. It's just so remarkable. And we've been traveling. We've been able to do that from, uh, from Europe and uh, just really like it. Today, as I said, we do remember and honor Leo the Great, an effective pastor and wise teacher who served as Bishop of Rome from the year 440 until his death two, two decades later in 461. He was known as being very pastoral. Twice he was able to negotiate with barbarian invaders who had laid siege to Rome. He had a strong reputation as a teacher of the faith, and he was able to mediate disagreements within the church, especially those related to the personhood of Christ, that is to say both the humanity and divinity of Christ. Leo passed away on this date in 461. Also on this date in 1619, René Descartes had that dream that inspired his meditations on first philosophy. I think it's interesting, as we've been talking about dreams, visions, and revelations, that we can see sometimes those things that happen in our dream world, our daydream world, our vision world, can be very remarkable and have quite the influence upon us. In 1871, British newspaperman Henry Morton Stanley encountered David Livingstone in a juji near Lake Tanganyika in Central Africa, greeting him with the immortal words, Dr. Livingstone, I presume? And in 1969, Sesame Street had its premiere. It made learning fun in a way, but in addition, its fast-paced style, its frequent camera cuts, and its very short sequences were a real challenge for more traditional learning methods. I've also always had a feeling that Sesame Street gave birth to the music channels, uh, much music in Canada and MTV south of the border. Once again, music videos, very fast paced, lots of editing. Uh, 1969, the premiere of Sesame Street. And today is also recognized, in addition to Area Code Day, as Sesame Street Day. I think that's enough about this day in the week. It's time for us now to turn to our prayers. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm today is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For he who have founded it upon the seas, 
and made it firm upon the river's deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord, and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them up high of our lasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O, o everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And a collect with our psalm, Creator and ruler of all, open our hearts that the King of glory may enter and bring us rejoicing to your holy mountain, where you live and reign now and forever. Amen. We turn now to our Bible reading. We have been reading in uh, this month of November from the book of Revelation, and today we are ready to read chapter 6. You may recall that we had the letters to the seven churches uh, in, uh, in Asia Minor, and then John was taken up in the spirit and was taken then to uh, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, to the kingdom of heaven. He was uh, there taken into this room. The doors were open, the gates were open, and he saw the great one sitting upon the throne. And today now, we read, uh, well, we saw, heard that he had, uh, re saw this uh, scroll tightly closed with seven seals. He inquired who would be able to open this. And he learned that it was the lamb, the lamb who was slain who could open up the scrolls, that break the seven seals. And now we will see what is in the seven seals, and we will meet the four horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, plus open seals five and six. We have to wait a couple of more days to open the seventh seal. Then I saw the lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures call out as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider had a bow. A crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come. And out he came, another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth so that the people would slaughter one another, and he was given a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature call out, Come! I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider held a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for a day's pay, and three quarts of barley for a day's pay, but do no damage to the olive oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, Come! I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed with him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence, and by the wild animals of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God, and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number would be complete, both of their fellow servants and of their brothers and sisters, who were soon to be killed as they themselves had been killed. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and there came a great earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree drops its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll rolling itself up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the magnates 
and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone slave and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Well, the book of Revelation is starting to get interesting. What is this all about? Remember what we've been saying since we first opened up this book. It is a book of images. It is a book filled with picture language. And also, remember who it is that has opened up these seven seals. It is a lamb who was slain, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is opening them up. Now, scholars have debated over the years on whether this is an image of what has already taken place or what is going to happen. And I have no definitive answer to that other than to say this was a vision. This is imagery. This is full of symbolism. And so let's look for a few moments at the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The first seal is broken and out comes a white horse. And its rider is become a, punk, a conqueror, one with a power to conquer. Some have said this conqueror is none other than Christ himself. Others have said this is the Antichrist. If you followed the old Western movies, the good guy always wore, rode a white horse. But sometimes they didn't. And so we don't know. But certainly there had been many conquerors in Bible times. Conquerors who came, who destroyed. Remember, this was written sometime after 90 uh, in the Common Era, maybe as late as 110, 120. Jerusalem was already destroyed. The Roman emperor was a conqueror. It could be referring to him, who, in God's will, had been let loose to conquer. The second horse, the second seal was broken, and out comes another horse, a red horse. And that rider comes to bring war on earth. How many times has war been brought upon this earth? How few years there have been when there has not been a war being fought someplace on this earth? I was born just a few days after the end of the Second World War. And I grew up about the time I was five and vividly remember the Korean conflict. I may have told you about our across the street neighbor, Kenny. Kenny Rogers, who came over and was wearing, Kenny Roberts, I should say, who came over, was wearing his brand new soldier's uniform. He enlisted, was home on leave after basic training, and he was shipping out to Korea. And I was so afraid for Kenny. I'd known Kenny. Kenny had been good to me over the years as a little kid, and uh, I hoped he would come back safely. And I would follow that war every day. I remember when the ceasefire was signed, not really an armistice, just a ceasefire. And I said, is it really over? Can Kenny come home now? Well, he did come home and he, he used government funding and uh, did his uh, university education, became very active in theater arts and summer theater, uh, starred in a number of plays and uh, went on to a professional acting career. That was my neighbor, Kenneth Roberts. The third seal, out comes the black horse with scales, with wheat and barley prices, and a warning, do not damage the olive oil and the wine. Scales are often seen as a sign of justice. And uh, do not damage the oil or the wine. Sometimes in warfare, the crops are trampled under. Uh, the, that is sustains, and, and oil and wine were extremely important in biblical times. And then the fourth seal, the fourth and final horseman of the apocalypse, and that is death. And following death comes Hades, and given power to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence. Think how often that pestilence and famine and plague has followed wars. Is this in the future? Well, we've seen that future come true over the last two millennia. And then, no more horsemen, but the fifth seal is open, and that 
brings the visions of the martyrs of history, hidden under the altar and crying out, How long, O Lord, how long until you go and avenge justice? And the word from the Lord is, Wait just a little longer, just a little longer till I finish my work. And then the sixth seal is frightening. There is no doubt about it. But we've seen much of this. Earthquake, sun blackened, the moon turning blood red, stars following to, falling to earth. Some have said that what an image that is of the bombing that has come about in the 20th and 21st centuries. The whole landscape collapsed, collapsing. You know, some, some bombs are known as blockbusters. They are so big. Think of the power of first the atom bomb and then the hydrogen bomb and the missile delivery systems we have and what is called mad, uh, mutually assured destruction. People hiding in caves, begging even for the mountains to fall upon them that they might not see the terribleness that is happening. As I said, we have two more chapters or two more chapters to read before the opening of the seventh seal. Uh, the seventh seal will be, I would say, a, a seal of very good news. This is imagery, imagery that's always open to question, imagery that scholars have studied, asked about, and been concerned about for many years. But I think it's very important for us to, to study it, to see this amazing vision that John had while hiding in a cave on the island of Patmos, in exile, away from his close friends, away from those with whom he had worked, those he loved. An image that he saw as positive. Never do we hear him say, and I cowered in fear. He's just watching it. Sometimes I have fascinating dreams. Have you ever awakened and gone back to sleep? to see how that dream ends. I've done it many times. And I like to say I, I dream often in vivid color, in widescreen, with full surround sound. And I have complicated plots to my dreams. I have fallen asleep reading a novel, and I finish the novel, and then I go back to my novel, and I liked my conclusion better than the author's, even when it's an author I really like. So we will want to continue now. Uh, over these next days to see what else is opened up for us in our understanding of this image, this vision, this revelation of end time, what is called the apocalypse. Let us turn now again to our prayers. O Lord, grant that your church, following the teaching of your servant Leo the Great, may hold fast the mystery of our redemption and adore the one Christ who shared all the fullness of your glorious deity, yet humbled himself in mercy to share all the pains of our humanity. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I see that as we have finished our readings and first prayer, that the birds have stopped singing, and now a neighbor dog is making himself known. The last few days it's been so nice and warm and I've wanted to go outside, but the neighbors have been out mowing with their mulching attachments on or with their jet powered leaf blowers or making other work, some doing carpentry work. And so today so far, with a little help from the animals, and the animals are our friends, uh, it's been a lovely day to be outside. I know it's gonna turn a little cooler in the next few days, so let's enjoy this nice weather here in the middle of November well, we have it. We continue our prayers. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remain with us, Lord, for the day is far spent and evening is at hand. Kindle our hearts on our way, that we may recognize you in the scriptures and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. 
guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now in a moment of silence, I would invite you to bring the prayers that you have to this time, those things that trouble you, that concern you, those that you would wish to pray for. God has given us a gift of many languages, and our Lord Jesus taught us a model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Now in the language we choose and the form we choose, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love, and those you would pray for, now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace. The God of peace go with you.